So welcome control to control of nonlinear dynamical systems. Um, I think we started a rather interesting lecture last time. Uh, maybe a little bit complicated, but uh, we started discussing the Lasalle invariance principle. Uh, this is for scenarios, like I said, where you have several asymptotically stable systems with a you know nice enough uh, Lyapunov candidate, right? But uh, when you take the v dot. That the directional derivative, it turns out that it's only negative semi-definite, yeah. And this is a sort of an issue, yeah. And uh, because this only by your typically Lyapunov theorems, this only gives you stability, right? This is not enough, obviously. Yeah, you you know that in most cases, you know that these systems are asymptotically stable just by looking at their behavior in real life, yeah. Just like this pendulum, simple pendulum. Okay. Then of the second motivation was. Uh, uh, systems with limit cycle behavior like the Van der Paul oscillator. I mean, you have the linear oscillator, of course, then the Van der Paul oscillator is like a nonlinear oscillator. So, they have this limit cycle type of behavior, which is you know, also something you want to sort of capture or encapsulate in your stability or whatever notion you want to call it. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, so, in order to talk about the Lasalle invariance, we defined a uh, few things that is the invariant set, limit points, and limit sets. I hope all of you are clear on these definitions. If you still have some confusion, talk to me now or later, anything is okay, okay. Um, and then we went on to state the Lasalle invariance principle, alright. Uh, so I will restate it, not state it, but I will sort of explain what is going on. Uh, the Lasalle invariance principle basically constructs a bunch of sets, okay. Um, so you basically start with the domain, yeah, and I, if you remember, I told you that this is the dr type of a set that you were working with last time where everything holds all the derivatives are negative and all the nice things happen yeah inside that set is where all the complications begin in lasalle invariance all right you you have to construct a omega which is a invariant and compact set okay it has two properties invariance and compactness compactness was just closed and boundedness in reals so you need a closed and bounded set which is invariant Okay, which essentially means that any trajectory that starts inside this set remains inside this set and because it is a closed and bounded set, it means that you have uh, all your trajectories will remain bounded. Yeah, If you start inside the omega set, your trajectories remain bounded inside the omega set because it is not like some kind of elongated cylinder or some funny set like that. No, it is a closed and compact set, Yeah, sorry closed and bounded set. Okay, so it cannot just escape anywhere. So already by constructing such an omega, we have in a sense uh, said something very nice about the system. Hmm? So remember that. Yeah. So although we are not assuming uh, Lyapunov candidates here, we are still making some assumptions. Okay. And then in this set, we require v to be positive semi-definite and v dot to be negative semi-definite. Okay, in this set, we don't care what happens beyond it. Yeah, we are saying we are we are restricting our en entire analysis to this invariant set. If you cannot, for your system, find such an invariant set, you cannot apply Lasalle invariance. Yeah, so be very careful. I'm not just constructing these sets for the fancy of it. Okay, if you cannot construct this omega set, you cannot apply Lasalle invariance. Okay, and so within this set, you have these two nice properties holding. Okay. And once you have this set omega, the set E is then constructed by taking the set V dot equal to 0, okay, set of the states where V dot is exactly equal to 0. Obviously, we have said that V dot is less than equal to 0. So, equal to 0 is also part of omega set, right. Therefore, the set E is completely inside the omega set, that is evident, okay. And once we have the set E, we construct what is called the largest invariant set inside E. This is the set M and the claim of the theorem or the principle is that if you start your initial conditions inside the omega set, you are guaranteed to converge to the set M, okay, which is again a 
positive limit set and it is the largest invariant set okay notice we didn't say anything about the compactness of m or for that matter we didn't say anything about the compactness of uh, e either hmm? uh, so this is something you need to ask yourself i mean do you think e is a compact set or can you say anything about the compactness or closed and boundedness of the set e okay let me start simpler is the set e bounded yes i mean it's even evident by the picture but you should not again ever give me proof by picture yeah please don't do that the set e is bounded just because it is contained inside omega and omega is bounded so e and m both acquire those properties both are bounded sets what about closed is e a closed set is e a closed set we have done this argument many times yes ah how are you going to so so you think it's closed you are doing proof by picture aren't you because i drew this line you think inside and outside those ideas work if you know the spaces here i am not giving you any particular shapes in space i mean i am making something but m e could be very well something very complex looking do you think e will always be just a uh, you know closed curve not necessarily right i could always play with the system just like i constructed all these funny dynamical systems i could construct it so that e becomes a disk or something like that or maybe you choose the v very badly then also this is possible so is e closed we talked about two ways of testing whether a set is closed one was this complement thing which you learned there was another way right which is what we have been using a lot to test whether a set is open or closed how do you do that we've mentioned this a few times no we never used this in this class if you remember i mean fine i mean maybe once the same thing what she said contains all its limit points means supremum is also a limit point actually but that's not the test we never used in this class we use something else to construct open sets and closed sets specifically in the proof of stability we kept constructing open sets on this side and that side how did we do that any other way of testing any other way of constructing open sets forget proving open sets how do i construct if i give you open set in one space how do i construct open set in another space thank you very much same with closed right inverse of closed is closed under continuous function inverse of open is open under continuous function excellent so in this case what can i say what is the set e set e is what it's written here v dot of yes i am hearing something but not what is set e and why is it so complicated is defined here what is set e okay you folks are not used to this notation hmm? please get used to this this is not difficult at all you will if because this notation will show up in your exams from from this e definition set e is obvious what is set e no 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 what is no nothing complicated at all from here i have defined e can i write e in short hand in any smart way you just said it's a function continuous function is there a function involved here or not all right wow okay disappointed to say the least okay why what's so complicated why what see you know i won't go ahead without this sensor there will be complete silence then what is set e i have defined it can it be written as something else any short form any short hand what is the set e yes it's a function of what 
seti is the image of the function wow okay no unfortunately no so is it can i write it in another way or no is this it you are just saying words i need the math i can write one thing in 20 different ways in math and we've done this so many times why why you guys are like okay you use these notations all the time what are we doing hmm what did we do here what is it that we did here can you can somebody tell me what is it that we were doing here how did i construct this e there is a different e by the way but still how was this constructed a uh, why why no, forget inverse image of open set why did i construct it exactly like this what was the reason to construct it like this what was the origin of this idea i mean you know because i am not going to spoon feed you here i am telling you the proof and giving you step by step so it seems easy if i give you a simple proof in the exam you will not be able to write one step if you falter like this yeah ha huh, so what so what so we wanted a bound of what or norm x we wanted a bound on norm x is it i don't think we wanted a bound what did we want a bound on ha ah, okay so 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 we wanted the v to be upper bounded by alpha epsilon 1 square okay v of x to be bounded by alpha epsilon 1 square okay then how did i go from here to here what is the logic v upper bounded by alpha epsilon 1 square so why this and so you are saying the what is where does the set e lie by the way set e is in which space it's an rn fine i'll tell you it's an rn huh so it's in the x space space where your states are sitting okay so v of x is i want it to be less than alpha epsilon 1 square so from there i went to this one i just constructed minus alpha epsilon no don't do this when you do this in the exam also you have to you have to construct is the same logic that i'm asking you you are saying you are thinking it's obvious because i'm telling you the steps when i tell you the steps everything seems obvious in the exam there are no steps right you will not be given steps you have to start from the beginning so why did i construct an inverse because i knew vx had to be less than alpha epsilon 1 square all right then x has to be v inverse of whatever alpha epsilon 0 to alpha epsilon 1 square or minus alpha epsilon 1 square to epsilon so, okay great what's what what am i doing different here where is this guy ha huh, this guy isn't e also a set set in the space of x okay excellent now can i write e in another short form he said e is image of a function i mean it is wrong but not a, at least it's a direction is e the image of a function is e the image of a function okay what is it a pre image of thank you what is e then ha huh? we dot inverse what 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 we dot inverse of what i will try thank you v dot inverse of 0 by the way is it just v dot inverse of 0 or is it enough is this enough this is not enough i can tell you why yeah these are things you have to be very used to huh? uh we don't state it as a prerequisite unfortunately but i should probably uh, analysis is a little bit of a prerequisite here so x is in omega hmm? x is not an rn not the entire space hmm? if x was in rn this is okay but x is not in rn all right so what how do i fix this in this definition here ah yes yes in words good in in math yeah thank you very much intersection omega this is precisely what it is okay 
please be little bit comfortable with this. This will be a bit of trouble for you otherwise. Huh? We will be, you will have to do this. Okay. Now I am claiming E is closed. Why? Why is E closed? So these are basically standard set operations. I am not doing any analysis. I am just writing a set in, for example, whatever you are saying in words, these things have to be captured in math. Why do I have to capture it in math? If you don't do that, you can't claim anything about closed and open. Just by saying these words, you can't prove that it is closed or an open set. Hmm? But as soon as I wrote it like this, I can claim something. Is it closed? Why? Huh? Function yes, yes. Function is continuous, so a little bit more, <laughs> little bit more. Sure, function is continuous, v dot is continuous. Okay, because I said v is c1, which means it is a continuously differentiable function. So, the derivative is continuous. So, v dot is continuous. Great. Now, what? Omega, ah, omega is closed. Okay. Alright. Sure. But, but what about this? Is this a closed set? Why? Inverse image of a closed set. Because you single, I said this last time. In fact, write these few things down. Huh? Write these down in your notebooks. What is it? Inverse image of closed set is closed under continuous function. Inverse image of open set is open under continuous function. Okay. Closed set contains its supremum and all limit points. Okay. Then finite element, finite element sets that is finite sets with finite elements are always closed. These are some key facts. Write this, memorize this. Huh? Memorize this. No need to prove or anything. Memorize it. Nobody is asking to prove this. It's not an analysis course. Huh? Inverse of open, open. Inverse of close, close. Under continuous function. Hmm? Finite sets always close. Close sets always contain their supremum, infimums and all limit points. Supremum, infimums are basically limit points. Okay, supremum and infimums are also limit points. Okay, okay, good. So this is E is closed. Okay, I found that E is closed. Uh, can I say something about M? M, M. It will lead you to more facts that you have to copy down. What about M? M is bounded. We already said M inherits the property of omega. Is it closed? See, m is already invariant, right? We already said that m, we, that is what we defined it as. It is the largest invariant. So, let us forget about that. It is bounded. Closed is the only property that is left. Is m a closed set? So, m is a positive limit set. I already mentioned it here. Okay. Are limit sets closed sets? Anybody knows this? Limit sets are what? I defined it, right? It is a set of limit points. So, it is the points to which the sequences converge. Now, now, what is a closed set? A closed set is a set which contains all its limit points. I just said that. Okay, it's one of the points. I hope you've noted it down. Okay. Now, what I'm asking is, is the limit set itself a closed set? Which means, which means, does the limit set contain all its <coughs> limit points? Almost sounds like I'm doing a rap song, but I'm not. Does the limit set contain all its limit points? Okay. Even if you don't know, the answer is yes. Okay, because a limit set uh, will have no limit points other than the elements of the set itself. Okay, think of the circle here. This is a limit set. We discussed this, right? In fact, this is a two simple element set. Wherever you start, it will just making the circle. So, forever it is there. Okay, so if you see, there are no other limit points other than this. Okay, remember the limit points depend on the initial condition. So, do not get confused by the other circles. So, this, all of this is corresponding to an initial condition. Okay. So, I apologize. Sorry. So, this, the limit set, the limit points of the limit set are the limit set itself. Okay. Note this down. Limit points of a limit set are the same set. Okay. So, if you call omega or you can just write in shorthand omega if you can, if you remember from our notes. Limit points of omega are the set omega, cannot be beyond omega. Okay, which means omega is a 
sorry not omega m m m m sorry m m was the limit set not omega m limit points of m or any limit set are the same set itself cannot be beyond that set hmm? it's you can check with any sequence if you are even if you are not able to prove it you can check any sequence is half one half one sequence the limit set is one and a half one comma half right it can have no other limit points because anyway it is two discrete points so it's a closed set therefore m is a closed set limit set is a closed set okay any limit set is a closed set okay these are facts that i want you to memorize hmm? we will not have the luxury to prove it right now hmm? okay good so we have a bunch of very nice sets i hope you are now convinced that all our sets are super nice except for the d domain set inside that we had omega which we constructed which nobody gave it to, gave to us which was compact and invariant inside that we found in set e which is also compact and invariant now because it has closed bounded sorry it's only compact the set e is only compact not invariant and then inside that we found the largest invariant set therefore m is also compact and invariant so m has exactly the same properties as omega okay so you start from a similar type of a set and you end in a similar type of a set okay so lasalle invariance is is that's why geometers love lasalle invariance principle because it is very mathematical okay um, but this is also very useful okay so just keep this in mind that all these sets have very very nice properties and the ability to apply the lasalle invariance relies on you having this omega set if you don't cannot apply okay we will look at the proof but before that i remember we were doing the example hmm? so we will restart the example okay this was the pendulum correct and what did we do we took just the energy as the v function okay we don't care we only need semi definiteness and it is okay it is in fact if you take any x1 x2 it is semi it's not going to be negative because of 1 minus cos x1 is lower bounded at 0 same this guy hmm? so it's semi definite if you want positive definiteness then you have to fix x1 to a small range minus pi to pi but we don't care to have positive definiteness okay we are semi definiteness is enough so we choose a larger range of x1 why why did we choose the choose the larger range of x1 do you remember for the pendulum to have more than one equilibrium because we want to show the power of lasalle invariance so we were capturing this equilibrium and this equilibrium also by x1 minus 2 pi to 2 pi but x2 was free to be within r and this was our domain d okay now to construct omega we did some interesting manipulation okay how did we construct omega we constructed omega using v itself okay so we did somehow the reverse thing first we chose a v and used that to construct omega how did we do that we said that so first we did this v dot we saw that it is less than equal to 0 okay wherever we take it doesn't matter it is definitely negative semi definite the domain of x1 x2 everywhere in d in fact anywhere in d this is negative semi definite ha huh? so i am not concerned about the set omega anymore so this v will help me construct the omega so what do i know v is non increasing okay so if i start the v at some value it will stay below that value okay so i'm going to construct the set omega such that v remains below this value okay and how did we do that i think we did we wrote it we write it hmm huh. i think i erased it if you remember we construct the set omega as i wrote this by the way x1 x2 in d such that v 
less than equal to some constant c okay and this is the same as or this is same as saying v t0 less than equal to this constant i am more than okay because v dot is negative semi definite in all of t okay and to do this i just wrote this guy so i want this quantity to be less than equal to c okay so how do i do that i take the smallest value of this which is zero right and then i have x2 is bounded by square root 2c okay this we calculated last time so therefore i get my omega as this set okay i get my omega as this set okay just note that it it's written here huh? this is from how i get this uh the only thing is uh, i will not make them open ended i will make this closed okay i have made this closed just to ensure omega is a closed set if i take the open bracket then it is an open set huh that i don't want i want omega to be closed so this is what i take my omega as okay this is fine i mean in fact i can take my domain also domain has no restriction it can be open or closed hmm okay so i take the domain also with a closed bracket not the open bracket okay so 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 this is my omega i have a nice omega now okay now i'm ready to apply the lasalle invariance forget this yeah so uh how do i apply lasalle invariance so yeah so i construct the e set what is the e set the set where v dot is exactly zero right so that is just requires me to have the x2 term to be zero okay i don't care about the x1 term okay so this is the set e. again i will make this the close bracket not the open bracket okay yes why are we taking the maximum value we are taking the minimum value yeah because it's just an inequality requirement no look at this i want vx less than equal to c we we have vx less than equal to c so this is i want x2 square by 2 plus k1 minus cosine x1 less than equal to c okay uh you can look at it in a couple of ways first is i'm not interested in bounding of x1 because x1 is already bounded the way i want okay so this is only going to make a positive contribution right it is only going to make the left side larger so if or else you can write if you may i will write this do you believe me ha huh? so effectively i made this zero only you know see if i if i took the maximum what will i get i will get this as less than equal to x2 square by 2 plus 2k but that is not helpful for me this is also an upper bound this is also an upper bound i can't compare the two how do no i don't require that i don't require that i only need vx to be less than equal to c why the maximum value okay it may not reach the maximum value understand yeah so so this will not be whenever you are comparing inequalities this is pretty standard you have to be able to write it like this once i write it like this i can compare this and this because it's a natural inequality going from left to right but if i write it like this i can't compare this there is no guarantee which one is larger now this is standard in inequality i know you are thinking max of v has to be but no it doesn't have to be but because the max of v may never be achieved yeah yeah we are taking but it may not hit all the sides we don't care we only need this much hmm? 
because if you do this you are significantly restricting x2 significantly ha huh? which we don't need which we don't need ha huh? which we don't need okay we come up with the best estimate or largest possible estimate of x2 okay all right